With the first pick, the Carolina Panthers select Cam Newton, quarterback, Auburn. Touchdown, Carolina Panthers. The Carolina Panthers select Luke Keekley. Keekley, touchdown. The Carolina Panthers select Dar or Tulelay. Kelvin Benjamin. Kelvin Benjamin. Got a touchdown. With the eighth pick, the Carolina Panthers have selected Kristen McCann. The Carolina Panthers are on the clock. Live from Bank of America Stadium, it's time to break down the Panthers NFL Draft. It was a busy day in the Panthers front office as they selected three players in the 2017 NFL Draft. I'm Libby Wiesman alongside NFL analyst John Halpin. Panthers insider Mike Kraft is standing by and guys, the Panthers took two guys in the second round today, a third in the third round. We'll start with the first with the number four or the 40 if overall pick Curtis Samuel initial thoughts on the wide receiver out of Ohio State. We've been hearing the term Swiss Army knife a lot around here this week, haven't we? Um, Christian McCaffrey's versatile, Curtis Samuel's versatile, over 700 yards rushing and receiving last season at Ohio State. Um, he looks to be more of a wide receiver, but they're going to be able to move him around a lot, just like McCaffrey. There's talk about evolving the offense during the offseason. Those first two picks certainly look like it. And Samuel's a fast guy, Mike. He ran a 4-3-1 at the Combine. Well, I tell you what, Dave Gettleman said he was not afraid to double down. And this time, he doubled down on versatility and those quick twitch guys who can make things happen. One of the things both of these guys, these first two picks, will give the Panthers is the ability to catch the ball and have a high run after the catch or rack. And that means they can take a pass behind the line of scrimmage like a bubble screen, make one guy miss, guys, and take it to the house. Yeah, Ron Rivera said during the press conference later, about, talked about getting the ball out of Cam's hands faster. Someone asked him about it. You know, we, we, they talked about that at the end of last season. These are two guys, McCaffrey and Samuel. You're going to be able to get the ball to them quick. Like you said, run after the catch. This fits it perfectly. Yeah, and when we look at plays, I'll show you the way teams spread out defenses and win that box count. And because teams have stacked up against Cam and his own read to really stifle this offense, now they have the ability to spread the field from sideline to sideline and force the defense to cover from sideline to sideline. And that will leave holes in the defense. And you're going to hear a term attacking green grass a lot with this offense. So last year, we know the Panthers went defensive heavy early on in the draft. Well, it was a role reversal. The Panthers selected Taylor Moten with the 64 pick overall, a guard out of Western Michigan. And this is a guy who he's he's got size on his side, 6'5", uh, 320 pounds. John. Hog Molly. Dave, Dave Gettleman finally got his hog molly. Yes, he certainly did. This is someone that they talked later about him being versatile. His position's probably going to be, he's first a tackle, but he's going to be able to play guard too. They talked about needing versatile linemen who can fill multiple spots. Uh, this, is, this is one big dude. Mike, they, they said in the press conference that he's a smart football player. You saw him at the Senior Bowl. Your thoughts? I sure did. I hung out there on the fence with Ray Brown down there where the offensive line and defensive line go at it. And I know he looked at this young man and was very impressed because he'll get those hands on you like that and you can't get away from him. And he's a big player. Versatility comes in as a tackle, 6'6", great reach. That means that he can get his hands on those defensive linemen before they can get their hands on him. And the guy who gets his hands on the other guy wins first. We knew Dave Gettleman would have to go after a defensive player eventually. They had the 98th pick in the third round. They traded down to the 77th to get Deshaun Hall from Texas A&M. He's another big guy that you know Gettleman is really excited about. Some of the mock reports had him going in the second round. John, your thoughts? Yeah, the, the trade up was because they didn't think he was going to last till the end of the round. Uh, Dave Gettleman had a lot of nice things to say about Hall. He's a guy who was more of a linebacker. He's sort of transitioning to become a, a more of a down lineman now, but he's getting bigger. They, the Panthers seem to think lots of potential that guys this naturally big who can maybe get a little bigger are, are pretty rare. And they've, they've said he possibly could fill into his size a little bit more. Mike, what do you think? Well, he comes into a great situation. We talked about this last night when we were looking at picks and talked about a defensive end coming into a defensive unit with Julius Peppers. Charles Johnson, Mario Addison. Then you got your coaches, Eric Washington and Sam Mills the third. He's coming into a perfect situation to make that next step. He's a, a, a fast player. He moves well. 
and he'll be in an incubator and who knows what will come out after he finishes mat maturing. He's got quite a few people to learn from. Yeah, I, I found a senior bowl quote earlier from someone I was on Pro Football Focus said he made some of the best offensive tackles in this class look silly. That's pretty nice, Mike. Yeah, it is because it, it's mano a mano down there in the trenches. And when you find a guy, uh, if, you, if you think back to when Mario Addison first came to this team, he had that ability, but he was able to learn from this group of coaches and also from the players that he was around and became a much better player. I see this guy over time making that kind of progress and being a core player in this defense. Well, Dave Gettleman obviously got three guys that he's very excited about. Let's hear what he had to say. Again, the process is you're looking at everything. You know, what are they like off the field? What kind of family backgrounds do they have? How smart are they? You know, we do the human resource test. Um, you know, we spend time with these guys because, you know, you guys have heard it a million times, our culture is important to us. And like Ron said, you know, and, and we talk about everybody wants to win. We want guys that hate to lose. And these four guys, the way they play football, you know they don't like losing. Guys, you, you heard what Gettleman had to say. Any, any thoughts, John? No, I mean, you know, it, they're, they're, they're excited. He's, he seems happy, you know. That we talked, we heard about some tense moments last night, but, but after today's picks, that he, he seemed like he checked a lot of boxes already. Mike, I want to ask you, Christian McCaffrey, he was in the building today, the Panthers' eighth overall pick in the first round. You dug up some details about his size. Would you like to explain about that? Yeah, when I was coming to work this morning, I heard a lot of talk on talk radio about Christian McCaffrey and his size, and it got me to thinking, okay, who are some of the guys in the league, the all-time legends who played this game? And when you look at this list, let me tell you what you're looking at. From left to right, guys, you are looking at the top five rushers all time in the NFL. You look at Emmitt Smith, 18,000 yards there. Goes right down to uh, LaDainian Tomlinson. And I'm going to tell you, I remember when LaDainian was picked you know, there were a lot of people who discounted him as a quote unquote scat back. How did that turn out for the rest of the league? <laughs> okay. Now, hey, TBD down there, the Christian McCaffrey, 5'11, 202. He fits right in that group. And let's hope at some point he can find a spot right in there, especially in this Panthers organization. Well, Christian McCaffrey was in the building today. He arrived in Charlotte to take his first tour of Bank of America Stadium, got to meet with some of the coaches. He actually met with the media later this afternoon presenting his number 22 jersey, the jersey number he will be wearing. And it was nice to see him finally in the building, even though it was only 24 hours before he had been selected eighth overall. He, he just seems so calm. You see his parents sitting there in his press conference, very proud. And here's what some of the sights and sounds from his tour around Bank of America Stadium. It's stressful. You're sitting there, but I mean, it was, it was, I saw this. Anybody called you at all? No, no one else had called me. I saw the 704 number, though, and I, I, I knew I was, I was, I was geeked. <laughs> Cam at all? Three great. He called me last night. Yeah, yeah so did Jay Stu and oh, Olsen. Did he? You know, yeah, texted me. Ryan Khalil texted me. Yeah. You know, Keith Luke texted me. Yeah. So. Did you meet? How many of those guys do you remember meeting? I met. I met. They were all right here training, and then yeah, Shaq was over here too. So I met. I mean, it was cool when I came. I like they were all all right here training, and a couple guys were in the training room when I met too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Different know, team, coach. same team. Seriously, I know. Man. Just going to the That'd same places. Man. Appreciate it's, it. It's, it's good, good to be on here. I told you it would. Yeah, I know. The colors. <laughs> I see. You see that panther? Who do you think they're going to pick? Who do you want them to pick? <laughs> we'll see. That's hilarious. <laughs> Christian. That's awesome. Oh, all these talk, all these I can't wait. Yeah, I'm going to see him. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> See it? I did. I took a couple shots. That's cool, man. Let's get to work. Let's go. <laughs> that's cool. I'm not sure who was more excited to see each other. 
Christian McCaffrey's former running back coach at Stanford, who's now the wide receivers coach here with the Panthers. Was he more excited to see Christian, or was Christian more excited to see it, Coach It looked Taylor? pretty close, didn't it? Yeah, it really they're did. pretty fired up to hang out together today. So that's good. It, 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 they're going to be spending a ton of time together. So this is really good. As we talked about yesterday, another reason why it's a great fit. Mike, you saw Coach Sula talking with him in that little clip when he was taking his tour around the stadium in the weight room. How excited do you think Shula is to get his hands on somebody as talented as McCaffrey? Well, very excited because, you, you know, the NFL draft is a marathon, not a sprint. And a lot of times you go through this very long process and you start to identify guys and develop a relationship with them before you pick. And then all of a sudden, sometimes it doesn't work out. In this case, it definitely worked out for the Panthers. And he has to be extremely excited, adding two dynamic players to his offense. We talked about those markers. I'm, he's going to be on that whiteboard drawing up plays left and right because he's got some toys to play with. Well, as I said earlier, McCaffrey was in the building. He met with the media. Here's what he had to say. Your impressions since you've been here. I know it's been a short trip so far. What do you think stood out from your, your brief time here already? I just feel like, you know, the, the Panthers organization is such a family. Uh, you know, I can I can definitely sense that. And uh, once again, just so lucky to be a part of something like that, you know, with such great veteran leadership, uh, such great young talent and some unbelievable coaches and ownership as well. And so, um, you know, to be a part of just a, a, a family, not just, you know, an NFL ball club is, is special. Going back to your upbringing and coming from a football family, uh, what advice has your father given you about making the transition from college to the NFL? Uh, it's pr pretty much been pretty consistent, his message to me my whole life, you know, whether it's going into high school, whether it's going into college, or, you know, now going into the National Football League. And that's just um, learn as much as you can, work as hard as you can, and, uh, and let everything else take care of itself. And so that's, that's kind of what I've been doing my whole life is uh, doing whatever I can to be successful, whatever I can to help the team win. Joined now by senior staff writer Brian Strickland. You saw McCaffrey in the building today. What are kind of your initial thoughts on how he's going to fit in with this Panthers offense? I mean, excited about what we're going to get from this guy. I'm excited for him, first of all. Great to see this guy up close. He wasn't starstruck at all. You know, his dad, Ed McCaffrey, that great lineage. But still, it's a huge moment for him individually and a huge moment for the organization to get a guy like that, somebody they've targeted for a while. We've talked about position flexibility a lot with this with this class, and this is a guy that is going to hit the ground running, have a roll right away. We've talked about his running ability, his receiving ability, his return ability is something this team needs as well, and he'll get right on the gate in that in that realm. Something he said about his dad today was that he hasn't tried on his dad's two Super Bowl rings. But <laughs> I want to go back because today was a busy day with Dave Gettleman in the front office and determining whether or not to trade. When you get to day two and you've got second round picks and third round picks. How do you make those decisions, whether to trade, not to trade? Well, we know Dave is a big best of pl player available type of guy. So he'll work the board in a way where you're able to get the best of both worlds, where you're able to meet the need and get the best available player at the same time. You look at what he did with Deshaun Hall, for example, moving up from 98 to 77. That's the best player on the board, I guarantee you. You know he's not gonna be there at 98. It happens to be what would be considered a need as well to get some youth inject some youth into that position. So it's the best of both worlds. You're trying to marry those two together, and the more you're able to do that, the more successful the draft is. All right, the, the other, the guys who got picked today, um, Curtis Samuel, so talk about the other two, uh, Moton and, and Deshaun Hall. How do you think they fit? I mean, they're gonna be rotational guys, maybe, you know, have gonna work their way into playing time, but but how do you think they fit with the Yeah, right now? we start with Samuel, obviously. You know, much talks about his uh, position flexibility again. But in the press conference we just had a few minutes ago, they were talking a lot about, you know, his straight line speed. You guys mentioned it, 4.31, lost Ted Ginn to free agency, a little bit of unexpected loss, created more of a need for speed, so to speak. And this guy was amazing at the combine with just that straight line speed, a 4.31. It would have been the talk of the combine most years, if not for John Ross. So you think about putting him in that Ted Ginn role right away. But obviously he, has, he can do some things that Ted could not do. I mean, we did see Ted again line up in the backfield some, but not nearly as much as Curtis Samuel has the potential to do. So Ron Rivera talked in the press conference after the picks about how the two, the two first picks, McCaffrey and Samuel, helped Cam Newton get the ball out of his hand faster. Someone asked him about that, and he said, yeah, that's part of what we want to do. How does that work for Cam? Because Cam is, has been more of a downfield thrower. This is going to be a change for him, too. Yeah, I mean, it's something, of course, Ron Rivera has talked about in the offseason that – 
the offense is going to be doing things a little bit differently, and that's one of the elements of that. I mean, if Cam Newton is an a accurate downhill passer, he can learn how to take advantage of those situations as well. I think it's just lack of opportunity to do that, if you think about it. You know, the Panthers had the second fewest catches for, for running backs last year in the, in the NFL. Obviously, that's not going to be the case this year. More repetitions, more chances to do that. Cam is more willing than ever to do that as he looks, you know, where he is in his career and looks forward to the future and wanting to be a factor in this league for a long time. We've heard the term evolve around this offense for the past few months. Do you think those first three guys that were taken with the offense, are those guys that are going to help this offense evolve? I mean, I think, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a revolution, if not an evolution. When you look at, at those two first two guys in particular, I mean, you got, in my opinion, the two most unique offensive weapons in the entire draft, and they ended up on the same team. I mean, coming into the day, I knew they were high on Curtis Samuel. I thought, you know, would they dare pair these guys? Because a lot of people are saying, well, there's too much overlap there. But I think Dave Gettleman was giddy about the possibilities that that would create and just, you know, as he talked about, you know, it's a matchup league and just think about all the different matchups, specifically mismatches you can create. Uh, the opposing defenses will have to try to figure out ways to deal with. As always, amazing insight from Brian Strickland. A reminder that rounds four through seven begin live on NFL Network at noon tomorrow. We're going to take a quick break, and when we return, Panthers insider Mike Kraft will be at the big board breaking down some plays. in the community, supporting the programs and the people that make the Carolinas great. Big hug, big hug. More than football, your Carolina Panthers, your team. To steal a line from Brian Strickland, the Panthers revolution offensively is underway. And when you add a guy like Curtis Samuel to the mix, I think it's going to do wonders for that Panthers offense. And I tell you, in the short term, it's going to do a lot for Christian McCaffrey because if he was just the first and only guy that Panthers pick who had that kind of talent, a lot of pressure would be on him, guys. But in this case, now they're, they're coming in together. They're going to learn together. And it's just going to be an awesome thing. But look at this young man here. And one of the things that I noticed and liked was his versatility. He put the ball in the end zone during his career, both on the ground and through the air, nine times on the, on, through the air and 15 touchdowns on the ground. That tells you he's versatile and productive. And when he gets the ball in his hands, he knows how to find the end zone. Last night we put on our imaginary hats and looked at this offense. Let's go to this first play because I want to take you back to that. He, the Panthers coming out are probably going to look a lot more like Ohio State than the Carolina Panthers when people remember. And here is Samuel right here. But what I want you to think about is with him on the field, the kind of flexibility that you could have uh, going across the board. Let's say you have uh, Kelvin Benjamin right here. You know where Samuel is. Let's say you have Christian McCaffrey right here. Jonathan Stewart right here. And then on the backside, a lot of times they use those tight sets. So imagine Greg Olson down here. Now, if you're the defense and a defensive coordinator trying to figure out exactly which one of these guys you're going to roll coverage to or give help to, it's pretty tough because the Panthers are in a prime position. Okay, now let's do this because when they do that, when they go out and cover all these guys in the box, and we talk about box count, and the success of the running game is determined by that box count. Now you look at it, if they go out and cover all these guys, that leaves only uh, six guys in the box. If they give help to either one of these slots, that means five in the box, 
And that is a offensive line coach's dream because now you get to rock downhill with your running back and you're basically playing five on five in the box. So that's an exciting prospect. Let's go ahead and roll this play. And here you see his ability as a receiver comes out, sits down and gets the catch. Hold it right here. Now we talked about this with Christian McCaffrey. When you have guys bearing down on a receiver and that ability to have run after the catch, watch this quick twitch move right here that he makes. Boop. Okay, guys are on their heels. He doesn't have a big gain here, but he does get positive yardage after the catch, and it's so important for these receivers to finish downfield. And we know that's become a matter of one yard for a down and, and how important that is to keep that mo momentum moving forward. Hey guys, three plus three plus three plus three is what? <laughs> it gets us there. Uh, first down. First it gets down. Us the first down. Every yard counts. Actually, it's four <laughs> plus four plus four. All right, let's go to this other play. And this is what we're talking about. This formation is spread from sideline to sideline. And here we have Samuel right here. I like this play because really what you end up with is a two back play because you have your running back right here. And because you bring Samuel in motion, now the defense has to account for him, not only as a receiver, but as a runner as well. And this right here is a simple jet sweep, but so many things can operate off of this jet sweep. Go ahead and run that play. Because as you look at it as an offensive coordinator, you see the defense adjust, stop it right here, okay? Now look, all of these guys in here are playing the run. And he's gonna get the run here, but you have a coach in the box watching the defense, and look at that. You know what that is right there? That's green grass. So while all these guys are rolling down, later on you can come back and hit a little skinny post right there for big plays. And with having all these, these weapons on the field, it gives you the opportunity to do things like that. And look at him go downhill. I mean, he has that stuff that we talk about. When he gets the ball in his hands every time, he could take it to the house. Okay, so two comps I saw today for Curtis Samuel, Tavon Austin and Percy Harvin. And Urban Meyer had compared Curtis Samuel to Percy Harvin. Well, Percy Harvin's a guy who was versatile and very talented, but some of his coaches had a hard time figuring out how to use him. I don't, I don't think they ever maximized his talent. There's other issues there, but how hard is it for an offensive coordinator to figure out how to use a guy like that properly? I don't think it's hard at all because really when you draw it up on the board is X, Y, Z, H, tailback, fullback, and really the defense determine who, determines who gets the football because of coverage, the way the safeties are, are stacked, either they're in two, two high or one high. And now the quarterback knows what part of the field to operate in. And I think it's a great thing to have because now the, conf the quarterback has the confidence with all these weapons out here that no matter who I get the ball to, we're going to get a big play. You know, it's kind of like Showtime back in the old days with Magic Johnson com coming down the floor and dishing to Kareem, dishing to Worthy, dish kicking it out to Cooper. You know, I know I'm going way back. You don't know any of these. Stuff. I like you don't know I'm anybody I'm talking about. But the bottom line is, <laughs> The bottom line we is... got the young buck over here. I the do. more weapons you have, the more points you will score. And let me tell you, there is an arms race going on in this division. When you looked at what happened in the draft, I think the Panthers are right there, ready to make sure that for the third season in a row, the NFC Championship belongs in the NFC South. And in my opinion, it belongs right here in Charlotte. Well, we know that speed can only help the Panthers. They saw that with the addition of McCaffrey and Curtis Samuel. But let's talk about the people who presented the draft picks today on stage in Philadelphia. A familiar face with former Panther Travell Wharton announcing the two picks in the second round. And then tight end Greg Olson was there for the 77th pick when they traded down with the long shaggy hair to pick or excuse me, to pick Deshaun Hall. It was good to see Greg get up there. Let's go to our fan question on Facebook, though, John. We got a, we've got a couple fans asking for some pretty good questions. They are. Lots of people watching, lots of people asking. Um, Richard Fearing likes the draft, kind of like we do. The draft we is solid. I like the picks, adding speed and size on both sides of the ball, versatility and youth. Going to be a fun and exciting year in 2017. Hashtag keep pounding. Richard. I agree. 
you're going to get one of these hats. We're going to get in touch with you soon after the show. We'll ship one out. Come on back tomorrow if you didn't get this one because we'll give away another one. But the versatility thing really is a big deal. I mean, we've got these two Swiss Army knives that have just been added to the Panthers roster, and it's it's – it's absolutely exciting to think about the possibilities with them. But let's go into day three with the draft tomorrow. We've got rounds four through seven. Talk about some of the best available guys still on the board that haven't been taken. Maybe some guys that were expected to go in the third round that have now fallen to the fourth. But let's take a look at some of those best availables. John, any that stick out to you? Well, one, we talked about a tight end. I mean, first round there were rumors. You know, then people thought well, maybe they'll take one in the second or third. Jake Butt from Michigan tore his ACL in, in the bowl game, and, and people had thought he was probably a second-round pick, maybe a late first. He could be a guy, if, if the Panthers are still looking for a tight end, that could sneak in there. I have to say I was a little, a little surprised he was not taken today. I really did think he possibly could have gone in the third round. You, you get to add another weapon to the offense. <laughs> That's just crazy. But uh, really, at the tight end position, there is room, you know, for another person to go in there. And when you look overall at what the Panthers are doing, providing competition at, at a lot of different spots. We talked about that before the draft even started because that competition, I, ha I had an old football coach tell me one time, if you want to impress the people in the penthouse, build a fire in the basement. And by bringing in this infusion of talent, you are really lighting a fire in the basement, and that bodes well for this team moving forward. Well, the Panthers did make some trades today, so let's take a look at what the Panthers have remaining as we go into Saturday's draft. They've obviously filled their first four picks with a trade into the third round to get Deshaun Hall. They now have a pick in round five, a pick in round six, and a pick in the seventh. So now we don't have to tune in at noon for round four. People can go out, get a nice lunch, hang out a little bit, maybe check in at about 1.30 and absolutely, see what's going on. Absolutely, absolutely. And we remember from on Wednesday, pick 233. Kind of hard to imagine what could be there at 233. Captain Munnerlin was there, picked at 216 when he was drafted. So there's definitely plenty of options. I got a suggestion. Let's hear it. You know who I like in that seventh round, if he's still around? You're making me nervous. Ben Boulware, linebacker Your from Clemson. Clemson. Guy. Bring somebody from that Clemson championship team here to Bank of America Stadium. That's my request. All right. Well, fans, thank you for tuning in and staying up late with us. For Mike Kraft, John Halpin, and I, we will see you Saturday after the final part of the draft. Carolina Panthers select Cam Newton, quarterback, Auburn. Touchdown, Carolina Panthers. The Carolina Panthers select Luke Keekley. Keekley, touchdown. The Carolina Panthers select Dar or Tulele, Kelvin Benjamin. Kelvin Benjamin got a touchdown. With the eighth pick, the Carolina Panthers have selected Kristen McCann. The Carolina Panthers are on the clock. Live from Bank of America Stadium, it's time to break down the Panthers NFL Draft.